Puppy, come. Go ahead. Okay, sit. Sit. Good. Lay. Okay, go. What's up, guys? We recently just got a new addition to our family. And actually, she's not that new. We got her at 12 pounds, and now she's 40 pounds, so... <laughs> hey. And we had some kennels for her as a puppy, but she has definitely outgrown them now, and I think it's time we build her a more permanent, nicer-looking little kennel. So, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> As always, the first thing I do is draw up some plans. I do this by hand because I don't know any of those fancy computer programs yet, but hopefully soon. Plans are always useful because, as my mom always said, paper is for remembering and your brain is for figuring things out. I bought 1x8s and started breaking them down into strips that were 2 and 3 quarters inch wide, I think. I started on the table saw, but the board really wanted to bind on the blade and I didn't feel safe. So I switched to the track saw. And I know I really should just get a riving knife on the table saw, so it'd be a lot safer, but I don't have it yet. The track saw worked fine, it just took a lot longer. But safety first! Also, this video is showing you the first dog kennel I built, but I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to build two more after this, so I can speak a little to things I learned to do better after doing it a few times. Which is nice, because it seems like all my videos are first time projects for me, and always have room for improvement. Anyway, I've just been cutting all those strips to the final length that I needed, using my signature Jerry Rig stop block system to ensure that they are all the same length. Then I drilled all the pocket holes into the vertical styles so I could assemble the frames, the first time I did this I ended up coming back several times when I realized I needed to drill more pocket holes, but now I'm able to drill all the holes necessary at the same time, and that definitely speeds things up. Another thing I definitely don't try to do during assembly anymore is mess with a square and clamp things down on the table. I think I figured this out later in the video, but I have a clamp that will hold pieces together at 90 degrees, and that's definitely way faster. Something else worth noting is that when you're screwing into soft pine like this, it's really easy to strip out the holes. I found it useful to turn the torque on the drill way down to like 6 or something like that, and that way it would just snug up the screws without stripping the hole. Something that was a little challenging was determining the distance between the rebars. The easiest way to explain this is try to figure out how many bars you want in a specific section, add one, and then divide the space in that section by that number, and then make your marks on the result of that calculation. The reason you add one is because you're figuring out how many spaces you will have between the bars, because you'll always have one more space than the number of bars. Hopefully that makes sense. I probably made it sound way more complicated than it actually is. Anyway, while I was rambling you saw me drill out the holes for the rebar, I used a dowel jig to help me keep the drill straight, and now I'm just cutting the rebar to length using a grinder. The rebar took a lot of work to clean up and get ready because it was so dirty and rusty. I had to wire wheel each piece individually, and even then, I didn't get them perfect. I think if I end up making these kennels, I need to find a better way to deal with the rebar, or maybe find another more attractive bar that doesn't break the bank. And since I knew I was working with some rust, I made sure to use a rust-specific spray paint. Spraying them was about as simple as spray painting could get, so while they dried, we could play with the doggo. Good girl. Go get it. Playtime aside, I went back to pocket hole drilling. I drilled pocket holes in the horizontal styles that would secure the tabletop and the bottom to the frames. I only did this on the first dog kennel I made. After that, I only drilled holes to secure the tabletop, and for the bottom, I actually drilled holes in the bottom panel itself so that all the pocket holes would end up hidden. I made a much bigger effort on my other kennels to either hide or fill the pocket holes. On this one, I kind of just left them all visible. 
Once I had all those holes drilled, I measured and cut the pieces for the door itself and then drilled those pocket holes and screwed it together. I'm incapable of making anything perfectly square, so I marked the top and bottom so it would fit correctly. Then I did a test assembly of the frame so I could get the perfect measurements for the bottom panel. You can see that some of the frame pieces are missing. That's because my original plan to get the rebar in was to assemble everything for painting, paint it, then take off the top rails, insert the rebar, and then reinstall the top rails. You'll see later on why this didn't work, but once I was satisfied with the fitment of the bottom, I moved on to making the top. Nowadays, this is definitely the thing I start out with. There's a lot of waiting periods with the tabletop, with gluing up and staining and finishing all being done before installation. So if I start with the tabletop first thing, I can do other things while I'm waiting for things to dry. Also, I mill down the pieces for the tabletop differently now as well. Instead of cutting off the edges to make them square, I actually start on the jointer and the planer to get the faces flat, and then if there are any factory chamfers left, I will cut those out as necessary. But usually the planing joining process gets them out and I can get about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch of extra width out of each board. It's not much, but it can add up, and if your margins are tight, you need all that you can get. Oh, and I'm definitely a huge fan now of using biscuits for gluing up panels like this. Not because I believe they add any extra strength, but because they help so much in keeping everything flush. I had to do a ton of extra sanding on this tabletop because things were just a little bit out. And once the glue was dry, I could cut off the excess on the end and set about figuring out how to cut a chamfer on the bottom edge of the table. I'd never done anything like this before, but I thought it would look really nice and add a little bit of detail to the table. I ended up just using the track saw and hanging the track over the edge a bit, and that did the trick just fine. The bottom of my track had a little lip on it I could line up with the edge of the table, and that gave me the perfect cut in my opinion. In fact, I got so excited about it that I cut all four edges when I really should have left the back edge alone. I'll show you why later. The table is upside down here, but you can see just how perfectly things lined up. And after some careful sanding to not mess up my nice edges, and a lot of sanding to get the tabletop nice and flat, it was time for staining. I like using this pre-stain conditioner, especially on pine, because it makes the actual stain take a lot better and much more evenly. It takes about half an hour to dry, but there's no reason to throw out the rag just yet, so I saved it in this bag, and while I was waiting for it to dry, I could remove the bottom panel from the frame and get it ready for staining as well. I gave it a quick light sanding so it would be smooth, and I didn't use a pre-stain conditioner here because it's birch plywood and it takes the stain much better. By the time I had the bottom stained, it was time to go back to the top, and you can just see how the pine doesn't like to take the stain up as well. But if you're careful and patient, it works out. Then I decided to nail the sides of the frame together. This kind of caused the issue of not being able to remove the top rails later, but I don't think it was a mistake because nothing else was holding them together in the middle, and I really didn't want to put pocket hole screws all the way up the sides. And here I've just been putting on a waterproof finish on the bottom, for obvious reasons. I used a deck finish, so it should be very durable. And then it was time to stain the other side of the tabletop. You have to be very careful when you're staining two sides of something, because as you see here, I already stained the sides, and if anything drips down onto that side, it'll make it even darker, which I did have some issues with that, but at the end of the day, it's not super noticeable, unless you're looking at it. And while I was talking about that, I got done painting the frame, and then I tried to remove the top rails. This is where I discovered why I couldn't remove them anymore. I had covered up some pocket hole screws and no longer had access to them. At first I thought I had really messed up, but my dad usually has simple solutions for things like this, and he suggested just drilling the top holes all the way through. 
So I did that and realized how genius it was, so now I do it on all the kennels. It ends up being easier and the top will cover up those extra holes anyway. Now I don't think the rebar would be going anywhere, but they did rattle a bit, so to prevent that I used some caulk to hold them and that worked like a treat. And after putting a few rebars in, I realized it would probably be a good idea to put the bottom on, so it wasn't hard to reach in to get to the screws. Then I could continue with the rebar until they were all in. And once I was done with that, it was time to attach the top. I hadn't put the final finish on it at this point, which probably would have been a good idea, but Just we get to that anyway. Oh, and this is where I realized that cutting the chamfer on the back edge of the tabletop was a bad idea. It just meant that I couldn't attach the back edge of the kennel exactly flush with the back edge of the top. So I lost a bit of overhang on the front edge, and it meant I couldn't put it as close to the wall if I wanted to. Not the biggest deal in the world, but something to consider for sure. Then it was time to put the finish on the top, and as always I use my favorite type of finish, Wipe on Poly. It's easy to work with and leaves a nice satin protective finish. I think I ended up doing two, maybe three coats. You may also notice some trim on the bottom edge of the kennel. I put it there to cover up the plywood edge of the bottom panel, but when we were carrying it up my stairs, we tilted it on the edge and some of the pieces broke off. This is what motivated me to change and cut the future bottom panels to fit inside the kennel. Then it was time to hang the door. My experience with the Settlers of Catan boards had me terrified of hinges, but luckily this went very well. And I was so pleased when the door swung nicely and didn't rub anything on the very first try. And then it was pretty much done. <laughs> what follows will probably be the worst beauty shots in all of YouTube. Her puppy had some pretty bad separation anxiety, and the first time we left her by herself in here, she decided to chew it up. So, that was awesome. Luckily I got a pick or two before that, but yeah. Anyway, just goes to show you that life is life and stuff happens. We still really like having the kennel, and overall I really enjoyed making it. Hope you learned something if you want to try your hand at making something like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.